Hi, it's Sephora here. Today I'm talking with you about emotional flashbacks. I'm going to talk about what are emotional flashbacks, what do they feel like, what causes them, how it affects us and our relationships, as well as abusive situations, and how do we overcome emotional flashbacks. So what are emotional flashbacks? They're essentially reactions or responses. One might call them triggers or trauma responses, and they are using and coming out as the four F responses, the four F trauma responses, which are fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. They are suppressed, unresolved emotions that are caused by traumatic or neglectful events from our lives, generally from childhood. So these are on an emotional level, meaning they don't always have a visual or obvious overt component to them. So they're very tricky and hard to know that they're happening. And there can be sensory aspects to them, sight, smell, sound, and so on. At the same time, since they're on that emotional level, they might not have the visual component or such a strong, obvious understanding of where it's coming from. The visual component might even be delayed in it. So since they're on that emotional level, they feel very real in the moment and are hard to navigate. So what do emotional flashbacks feel like? It can be very different for every person, but generally the emotions that are labeled when feeling emotional flashbacks are something like dread, overwhelm, panic, bewilderment, shame, and depression. Very heavy, difficult, kind of helpless, hopeless emotions. It comes out as self-berating behavior, self-isolation, suicidality, and can trigger us right into dread and panic. It can also be something that affects our outward view of people like an outer critic or projection and so on. So basically what it does is shrinks us down to that childlike inability to handle situations, to understand the bigger picture, to problem solve, or to use the rational mind. And in order to have a mindful, wise mind, we need the rational mind and the emotion mind. So when the emotion mind and emotional flashbacks take over, we lose the ability to be able to handle situations. It reduces or removes our ability to handle abuse in a boundary way. Way or to know what to do in abusive situations or how to get out of them. It feeds cognitive distortions such as negative noticing, catastrophizing, negative self-talk or should talk. And it's very easy to feel attacked or criticized. It makes it difficult to handle conversations, conflict, and even discussions that might be slightly more difficult to be in. But at the same time, when you're not having an emotional flashback, these conversations should be able to be gotten through in an understanding way, an emotional flashback will remove that ability and make everything a hundred times more difficult. It can also add to or create projection and even worsen splitting in someone with BPD. So what causes someone to have emotional flashbacks? Emotional neglect from childhood or other abusive situations, punishments for making mistakes or emoting in the past, having emotions, expressing your emotions. When you're punished for that or for punished for making innocent mistakes, it definitely follows you around in life. Parentification or not having your needs or emotions recognized or tended to can also cause it. And traumatic moments either that are in your memory or subconscious can also create emotional flashbacks. So how do emotional flashbacks affect our relationships or abusive situations? Emotional flashbacks can make healthy connection very hard and almost impossible due to the defense mechanisms and responses that happen from the flashbacks. It's much easier to perceive criticism and reject and makes connection very, very difficult and untrustworthy. When we emotionally flashback, the narcissist uses this for their abuse tactics. So when it comes to abusive situations, the narcissist picks up on this. They basically scan you for this. They know that you are having a flashback and they use this against you. They feed off of fawning. They get a supply from the, if there is a fight response that comes out and so on. And because it reduces our ability to set boundaries and hold our boundaries in a firm way or think rationally, abusive people use this to their advantage. Okay, so how to overcome emotional flashbacks. It takes a lot of self-work, so I'm just going to give you a general kind of idea on what to work on, but really there's a lot of realizing where they might come from and that they're even happening in the moment. We almost have to force ourselves out of it with positive thinking because as I said, there's that negative noticing that it causes, so the positive 
positive noticing, like fighting the negativity is going to be helpful too. Now this doesn't mean to invalidate your emotions or neglect your emotions. It just means to really try to force those rational thoughts and remove yourself from that negative pit. Validating unresolved emotions in order to kind of process them and let go of them as you would call it. Noticing that they're happening to help kind of separate us from the experience. It helps reduce the shame that comes from having the emotional flashback. It gives you that room to be able to work on it and notice that it's not you. It's something that's happening within you that you can resolve. If you're suddenly filled with overwhelm and dread, notice that this is something happening. Step back observe and try to see what's behind it and know okay which areas do I need to work on so again there's so much in reducing and overcoming emotional flashbacks because it's so personal to each person but it is possible and you can do it